Hello everyone and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from the Sedona Performing Arts Center and Facebook Live. And we'd like to thank our sponsors for participating in this year's film festival. And I'd like to introduce to you two filmmakers. Please introduce yourself and your film. Uh, my name is Dr. Beth Dupree. I am a breast cancer surgeon. This is my, I guess this is my first film I've been involved with in this capacity. And the film is The Healthcare Cure. And Nick Webb is the real talent behind this yeah. because he started the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've known each other now for about one year. Yeah. Although it seems like for Long decades. Day. I know. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> seems so, like forever, but in a good way. And that's a good thing sometimes, yeah. right? Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the film. Well, so the idea of the film originally was to try to curate what the future of healthcare is and how we can maybe change the trajectory to make it more human. And uh, over a period of two years of filming this in both Ireland and the U.S., we really began to realize that the, the ability to really affect positive change in healthcare really had to begin with the genesis of, of re-establishing the time and the resources for the doctor and patient relationship. So the film really is about two things. One is the importance to make this big shift from a preventative, or from, a, from an interventional to a preventative approach in healthcare. And, and the second part of that, which is the way in which we weaponize that, is to really honor and respect that beautiful and coveted relationship between the doctor and the patient. Music to my ears. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have a clip of the film that we'd like to show. Sounds good. You know, I'd like to make a, a pretty bold proclamation here today, and that is healthcare is really sick. In fact, I would suggest that healthcare is in critical condition. For a lot of doctors, they forget it and they miss it. And for patients, it saddens me that they don't get that with their doctors because so many doctors forgot why. I had the opportunity to travel to Dublin, Ireland to share my ideas to the world about all that I knew about how the next bright shiny object was going to really solve all the problems. And at the end of that presentation in Dublin, Ireland, I met Dr. Power. He came up and interrupted a dialogue I was having with 15 people and he said, Nick, Nick, it's about the patient. Yeah, it's very interesting in medicine that um, you could describe as there being both an IQ piece and an EQ piece. There's a scientific piece and there's an artistic piece. It's really interesting when you're trying to get into med school in the first place. It's pretty much that they're talking about IQ. And how ironic that 2015, diagnosed with cancer, major surgery, and every step of the way, more and more treatment, I learned to live. I learned not to take every day for granted. But I learned about the healthcare system too. And I learned that it's not an easy place to maneuver and that there's a better way to deliver healthcare. And if the COVID crisis is the opportunity for us to finally get this right and shift out of a disease treatment model into a disease prevention model, then 2020 will have been worth it. really close to home for me um, in dealing with health care and I had two very ill parents and an uncle so dealing with the medical system and trying to fight all that you know my uncle was someone who never took medicine a day in his life and when he entered into the hospital it was three pages of 20 you know um, things that they put into his body and so it never it never healed him it only just put him in a state where he never would be healed. Mm. So in a situation like that, and I know you've, you've gone to Ireland, and um, how, I mean, that shift is a huge shift for, <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> for, for us. And um, it seems like it's been going in that direction, but nothing has changed. So um, give us some insight um, that you found. 
Well, I think the key here is is that we have to eliminate the drug and surgical and you know interventional trigger mechanism that lives today. And one of the problems is in defensive caregivers is that they only spend 20 27% of their time is spent in front of patients. The rest of the time they're data entry personnel. They're doing things other than patient care. So we have these amazing people that, that got into healthcare with the goal of being able to impact somebody's lives and the industrial machinery of healthcare has hijacked that relationship to where they can't really spend the time to address prevention over intervention. If we don't fix that, there is no chance that we can really cure healthcare. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you use the word fight. In healthcare, there, that word should not be part of okay. the language. You should not feel like you have to fight for your the right to healthcare or fight to have a relationship with a provider. Um, it should be a relationship. It should be a give and take where with my patients, I, I have a lot of patients that come to my practice and they'll say, Dr. Dupree, I'm not willing to do chemo, I'm not willing to do this. I say, okay, well, let's go back to the basics. Let's reframe all of this. And for a lot of my patients who came in adamantly opposed to surgery, chemo, or radiation, I spent the time to establish a relationship, to gain that trust, to get that rapport, and once you have that rapport, then you can work together to figure out a path to move forward. And I have um, one of the uh, individuals in the movie, Deb Shindell. Deb was very integrative. She was absolutely diametrically opposed to chemo, surgery, and radiation at first. When she learned about the particular type of cancer she had, and I wasn't her treating physician, she was treated um, out of state. When she worked with that doctor to explain to her that your triple negative breast cancer needs the big gun chemo. Your triple negative breast cancer needs to get radiation therapy after that area is removed. Well, she did the surgery, chemo and radiation, had a complete response to the therapy, but in addition, she changed her diet, changed her stress levels, um, went to a deprivation tank and, and soaked in a, in a mineral bath every single day of her treatment. Those were not things that her doctor told her to do. Those are things that she as a nurse practitioner, as someone who absolutely understood that the physical component of treating her cancer was one thing, and the healing component of what she needed was another. And I often talk about medicine as the right hand and the left hand. If all we have is right-handed Western medicine, treatment, drugs, interventions, and we've got two right hands, they don't work really well together. When you look at the left hand as the opportunity to shift in, you know, I call it the soil and seed, and I, I, I didn't invent that. I, that was from somebody's article. If we just continue to treat the seed that was planted in a body that became a cancer, and we do nothing about the soil, that soil is still going to be able to potentially propagate another seed. And in Western medicine, we're only taught about how we treat the seed that grows into a cancer and we need to reframe it and go back to where we look at the, at the soil and how do we eat, how do we sleep, how do we respond to stress, what are the things that we can do in our lives to change that and that's one of the things I think we did a really good job, I hope, well you can judge when you watch the movie, um, I hope we came across with that message that the opportunities that we do have um, and some are little things. I no longer take my laptop in my, in my patients rooms because when electronic medical records started, I was very intimidated because I'm not a good typist. So I'm a good surgeon, but I can't type for crap. So I, I would have to take my computer in the room. And when I moved to Sedona and I started my practice here, I left the computer in my office. I started leaving my, my days much happier because I didn't feel like I had an electronic device between me and my patient. And as good as electronic medical records are for the proposed purpose, it's taken an energy field between a patient and a doctor and put that screen right up between them. And I think that's a barrier. And so that's a simple thing. How do we get out of that now? Can we let the doctors not have the computers in the room? Or can we encourage them to say, how do you reframe this and look at this differently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I could sit here and talk to you for hours about, about this subject. I live here, it's, so it's OK. OK. <laughs> we'll get together. <laughs> And maybe I can help in some way. I don't know. <laughs> but how can people find out about the film? Uh, we have a website, which is, not surprisingly, thehealthcarecure.com. Okay. And is the film being shown again here in Sedona? Yeah, we have a showing tomorrow. 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. 
Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you for bringing this to the attention of the public. I am behind you 150 percent. Thank so you. So I would love to see um, things change yeah. in our health system. We're starting. We started yeah. the conversation. Yep. And that's where it all yep. happens, right? <laughs> well, thank you both you for bet. being here. Thank you for here. having us. Thanks for having sure. us. And we'll be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this.